Suicide Squad. We finally have a, an official proper announcement, some trailers around it. It's quite exciting. So English developer Rocksteady Studios, creator uh, creator of the much-celebrated Batman Arkham series, including three mainline entries and the VR spin-off, are now tackling sort of a new IP in Suicide Squad. Uh, and the full title of this game is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League as Everyone Suspected. Um, so we only saw a trailer in the DC fandom, but there was quite a few um, clarifications from the head of or one of the co-founders, uh, Sefton Hill from Rocksteady, just on certain things and how they'd actually work. So now we know the game's coming out in 2022 on PC and only on next gen, so PS5 and Xbox Series X. I hope people don't ask whether it's coming on the Switch, because it won't be unless it's a new Switch. Um, it is set in an open world metropolis, which is really, really cool, in my opinion. Uh, the characters so far that we know, Harlequin, Dead, uh, Deadshot, sorry, uh, King Shark, and Australia's own uh, Captain Boomerang. And one of the tidbits, uh, before I sort of just get your thoughts, and there's some other stuff that we'll chat about, is that it's actually a continuation of the Batman Arkham verse, which I thought was, yeah, really interesting. It's not how I sort of interpreted it when I was watching the trailer. What did, what did you think? First of all, this was a really good trailer. Um, oh, yeah. And, and can we should we tackle that now or in the overall thoughts? Because the trailers for all these DC fandom things, including the movie trailers, I was like, wow, this is just like 10 out of 10 trailers. Like, they're so good, <laughs> the trailers. Yeah, well, I did... Yeah, I did watch the, I guess, the trailer for, you know, the movie stuff. So the ones you've referenced here about the music choices specifically. Mm. Um, I don't know if I thought that the choice of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah for the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League was as good as, as you no, mentioned. No, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Let me break all these things down. Number one, <clears throat> and we're going way off a sidetrack already. Um, B.O.B., Bombs Over Baghdad from Outcast. I love that song so much that I actually learned how to sing it, like rap it. And it's quite a quick song, especially at the start um, with Andre 3000's verse. I love that song so much. When I could hear the first few notes of it in this trailer for Suicide Squad, I was like so amped up. And I will defend the Leonard Cohen thing with the Schneider cut because it is so camp. It is such such camp to have Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah (laughs) over the back of (laughs) Suicide Squad. Oh, sorry, but, ju- um, what's it called? Um, Justice League. That to me, that's perfect Schneider to have no, Leonard it, Cohen. It's, it's just so ridiculous. It's perfect Schneider, but it's unintentional Schneider. No, but that's like, what's so beautiful about it. That's why I love it. <laughs> and then we have uh, Nirvana, something in the way with the Batman trailer. I'm like, this is just like, I love it. It's like depressing, uh, don't have any feelings. Good. That was good because God, they, because, so um, that the melody of that, the very slow melody, they mm. kind of made it a bit. It wasn't. It, it was a bit synthy, and it kind of was a bit like, um, yeah, like very, very. Uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, but almost like Halloween, like horror movie kind of synthy to it. And I thought it was actually that was actually really good. Um, that trailer itself, you know, we're, we're not talking about the movie stuff, but um, yeah. that trailer was interesting. Oh, it was that, cool. So. It's very gothic almost. Mm. Like it was kind of like, yeah, yeah, it was a cool, cool trailer. Good trailers all around. And, you know, we're only going to mention the video game stuff, but yeah, yeah it was really, really good. And, I'm, I, you know, I think one thing we should also point out just so people understand our maybe bias. I don't think we're very biased in general, but for me personally, I've always preferred DC. Like if I asked you this question, if you could only have DC... IPs or Marvel IPs, which one would you choose? Um, just IPs in general. Like, so, doesn't matter what the film, TV, comic correct, or anything. Correct. Correct. So, if you pick DC, it means you never have any Avengers movies, games, comics, X Men, that's all gone. And then I'd, ha- I'd, I'd have to go with Marvel for very one very particular yeah. reason, which is X Men. That's why. Sure. See, I would pick DC. And I, I kind of knew that you were going to say Marvel. Because I definitely lean more DC, you'd probably lean more Marvel. You know, the, obviously the Marvel movies are better. You know, movies on pa- like you know, like from a consensus point of view. But I still love the IP from DC and just the tone of DC in general. But, but getting back to Suicide Squad, yes. Um, <laughs> what do you think so, of this game and the fact that it was like a cinematic trailer, not a gameplay trailer? So 
I, that's the that's the one thing I was going to say about the trailer is that it was a really good trailer, but for how long this game has been rumored to be in development, and the fact that Rockst it's been so long between you know large projects for them, it is quite disappointing that they didn't have any kind of gameplay at all. Thankfully, mm. the trailer was good though. So if oh, the so trailer if the trailer was kind of average, then I think you'd really notice the you know the lack of gameplay uh, more so. But I, it's interesting. I'm, I won't say that I'm super pumped for the game just because, um, you know, it's maybe not as much my thing as as other people. But I think for people that love uh, the Arkham games, and it, I think it's it's really good. And I'm looking forward to seeing what it actually plays like. Mm. And you know, I, I think you're right about um, this game, and now the fact that it's actually going to come out in 2022 so that marks maybe about six years since their latest latest release which would have been um the vr version well not vr version but the batman vr experience and game like i kind of wonder if they just were like they want the game to be as close to the cinematic trailer as possible do you think that's what they're kind of going for a little bit and then maybe they've pulled back and said you know what we don't want to have a gameplay trailer because we don't want to be accused later of doing like an anthem or something like that. I actually think the reason is because of Gotham Knights. So, oh, but, okay, yeah, yeah, the games do sound quite different in many ways. Like, first of all, this is a wonderful player co op game, and even if you don't have co op players, it's going to fill them in with, you know, like CPU squad mates that you can swap between mm. which is very different than what gotham knights which we'll get into next mm. is is doing but i think that if they had if they showed the gameplay off of this considering this is um exclusively next gen title whereas mm. gotham knights is going to be on current gen and next gen i reckon that it you know not so much that they would have looked very similar more so that gotham knights probably would have looked f- worse than it would have otherwise if they'd actually shown gameplay of this alongside at the same time essentially in the same event i think that's one of the reasons why not the only reason but one of the reasons why they chose to just do a cinematic one for this and then uh you know with gotham knights they did a a kind of a bit of a mix yeah that's a really good point and i didn't go away from it thinking oh you know where's the gameplay you know, like I felt very satisfied personally just to see it announced and kind of see the tone of what they want from the game. And, you know, even the part because Superman turns up and it's like a dark version of Superman. He actually kills a pilot that he supposedly saved, which kind of, you know, puts an interesting spin on the tone of the actual game. Maybe that, you know, all the good guys, quote unquote, all the Justice League have been, you know, taken over or something's happened to them. Right. Um but, you know, that point around, you know, what do you do and how do you present it? Like, I do think it's interesting and you probably need to look forward and go, if you put out gameplay now and the game's still maybe two years away, maybe even longer, what, what are you going to do next? You know, and you've probably seen a lot of games suffer from that where they've actually put out gameplay and then it's two, three years later and you're like, uh, uh, like, is that game coming? You know, like Beyond Good and Evil 2. Like, that's, that's years old now, that gameplay footage. And it, it, I, I don't know, I think it does get a bit weird if you do that. Um, so probably, yeah, it probably makes sense. And I certainly didn't feel like I was missing anything there. I thought it was really surprising when I saw that it was a one to four player co-op game. And to your point, you know, getting filled by bots. I, I always get nervous about those games, though. I, like, I, you know, can you think of any recent examples of games like that where it's worked well, where you have a co-op, predominantly co-op game but the bots actually work well because that's what i worry about in this game i mean i guess you've got games like uh ghost recon wildlands where you you know you have ai teammates a lot in that game Mm. and that game it ended up actually being that you just by you know directing them and using uh drones and things like that the game actually was quite apparently quite easy because of that but yeah I don't think, and I guess also, sorry, uh, Metal, Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, it wasn't a, so much a squad, but you had um, a companion that you could choose to bring along missions that had different abilities and things like that. I think it were, it makes sense for this game um, simply because it 
they the whole thing is they are a squad and they will often not do things by themselves you know like as in it's kind of the whole focus is that they're teaming up to do this and also it makes sense considering that you know not that every level is going to be having them taking on um superman or someone of that power level but it makes sense that they have to be a team to for it to narratively make sense why they're actually able to potentially take these people down yeah so and almost individually they're not kind of like hyper powered super villains if that makes sense like i don't think harlequin to me would ever be like a solo super villain you know (sighs) Like, being able to sort of build a whole game around that. Like, it kind of wouldn't make sense to me in this kind of Arkhamverse when you've got the Justice League, where they're, to me, a bit more, like, powerful one-for-one, one, if that makes any sense. So, I, I do think what you're saying makes a lot of sense. I just... I think it's something to look for where, you know, how well the game will, will work if you are playing more like a single-player style, which often, like, is what I would do because I don't normally play these games on launch. And by the time... I get into them, it's sort of like, you know, even you guys, you might not be, a, you know, that keen to play it, you know, two, three years later, <laughs> like in co-op. Like maybe you will, maybe you won't, right? But I, I normally another, that's a launch thing. I guess another game that I could probably, in my head, you know, it's probably not going to play the same, but I just think the Mass Effect games. So they're very mm. focused on companions and having very minimal control over those companions. But the difference here is that you're able to swap between them. And I think that could actually end up being really cool. So, mm. 